In a world of near-peer adversaries, it has never been more important to re-examine the field of camouflage, especially when it comes to night vision. In fact, ever since night vision devices started being used in warfare, various camouflage patterns, fabrics, and dyes have been used to make sure that camouflage efforts are just as effective at night as they are during the day. So today we're going to examine the little-known topic of IRR-compliant fabrics and dyes and show you some examples of this very specific yet extremely vital camouflage consideration. So what does IRR mean? We see this a lot being advertised when a new combat uniform or new camouflage pattern comes out. IRR stands for Infrared Reflective. To use the vernacular as correctly as possible, you can say that a fabric or uniform is IRR compliant or was printed with IRR compliant dyes. And infrared reflective dyes and patterns are what we want. This might be a hard concept to understand because one of the main camouflage tenets is reducing shine. In the field of camouflage, we try to reduce reflections and shine so so what's the deal? Well, with fabric dyes, it's a little bit different. The opposite of infrared reflective is infrared absorbing, which we do not want. We want light to bounce off of a piece of fabric and reflect in the same way at night as during the day. To put it as simply as possible, IRR compliant fabrics retain their patterns when viewed at night under night vision devices. Fabric that was printed with dyes that are not IRR compliant will turn all one color at night and the camouflage pattern will disappear. Here. Since this is a hard concept to talk about, let's jump to the tactical garage where we can see some examples. We filmed this indoors so that we can control the lighting conditions more easily. Just as a slight spoiler, we're not going to be featuring so many official military uniforms because roughly 99% of all military uniforms are IRR compliant, so it's not really going to be that surprising. Uh, this is why you don't really see this, this being a huge deal for militaries because they can purchase uh, fabric that is IRR are compliant. This really comes into play when you're trying to buy accessories for things or if you're trying to buy some aftermarket or third-party camouflage stuff to match uh, normal military stuff. So just wanted to kind of let you know that we're showing a lot of weird and random things that kind of illustrate the point of why IRR compliant fabric is such an important thing. And up first let's take a look at some samples under normal daylight conditions. Alright, so up first are a set of normal mechanics multicam gloves. These are the kind of gloves that you'd buy at the PX or just, you know, at a hardware store someplace. Uh, up next is an Arcturus leaf suit. Uh, now this is the kind of suit that you'd buy on Amazon as kind of like a knockoff um, for a more traditional Russian FSB style uh, leaf suit. So Arcturus is, is a well-known uh, brand for that kind of thing. So there you go. They make a lot of good stuff, but um, this, this particular leaf suit performs kind of interestingly as you'll see later on. Up next is an official uh, British military combat top. Now this is kind of their version of the um, U.S. military combat tops, as you can see. Uh, it's in the British pattern. Um, pretty standard combat top. You can get these from any surplus outlet, really. Um, they're very common. Up next is the Con Camo Ghost Hoodie. Uh, now this is one of the more specific kinds of camouflage. It's one of the more tailored specifically to be IRR compliant styles of camouflage camouflage garment. Uh, so this is the green variant, as you can see here, and this is the Concamo brown uh, ghost hoodie um, with a little bit of extra foliage there. So I'm going to show these at the same time because they kind of perform very similarly, but again, Concamo specifically is marketed as being IRR compliant, so just keep that in mind as we move forward. Up next is a set of generic, cheap, Chinese knockoff, multicam set of overwhites. Um, this is the cheapest thing you could possibly find on somewhere like Amazon or eBay, so we'll see how that does. Up next is a combat top made by Blackhawk. Um, this is made out of official U.S. grade, uh, U.S. military uniform grade multicam. I just wanted to show that this is in fact official branded multicam fabric and it's supposed to be IRR compliant. Um, these kind of tops were, are not military issue, but I just wanted to show the fabric just so that we have a baseline for what multicam looks like because everybody sort of knows what multicam is. Up next is the Helicon Tex Swagman Roll in Flectarn color. Um, this is kind of their version of the U.S. military poncho liner, again in the Flectarn um, camouflage pattern. And up next is an interesting one. This is an Arctis combat smock uh, in the Swedish M90 sort of splinter variant camouflage, uh, the desert variant. Now you might notice that this is a bit darker. Uh, that's because this particular garment has been dyed with writ synthetic dye. So I just wanted to see what this would look like underneath um, these conditions. Up next is an angle 
Angolan military, uh, Angolan armed forces uh, poncho. This is their official um, Angolan military poncho. And as you can kind of see, there are some issues with this even under the daylight um, with regards to shine. So we'll see how that performs under the night vision setups. Up next, we have the official U.S. military poncho liner in, of course, Woodland, uh, M-81 Woodland. As you can see, this is the official uh, U.S. military poncho. It is not a knockoff. This is important to remember um, because, as you can see, it's quite shiny um, even under normal daylight cameras. And finally, we have a backpack cover made by Miltec. This is a rain cover for a rucksack. Um, not sure what size. I can't quite remember, but it's, again, in the German Flecktarn pattern. And as you can see, again, it is shiny under normal daylight conditions. So we'll see how that works under the nighttime conditions. All right, so now let's take a look at some of these samples underneath night vision conditions. So to set up the scenario, uh, the main camera we're going to be using here is a Psyonix Aurora color night vision camera. Uh, that's going to be the main view and then off to the side on the right side of your screen is an L3 white phosphor PVS 14. And the reason that we're doing this dual camera setup is because traditional night vision tubes, analog night vision tubes, both white phosphor and the you know, regular green ones, uh, they are far more forgiving when it comes to IRR compatibility. You might find that some of these fabrics look a lot different under a normal night vision tube, but when it comes to other kinds of sensors, they're a lot more obvious, especially when it comes to IR illuminators. So for some of these fabrics, the ones that where it, it matters kind of the most, we're going to illuminate them with an IR light source. Now this introduces a little bit of bias into the system, but we figure, hey, look, in today's modern world, IR devices are extremely common, and it would not be a very good thing for your fabric that you choose for like a uniform to be okay under normal night vision conditions, but if somebody's out there in the woods sweeping around with an IR light, and you start glowing like a neon sign, that's probably not a swell idea. So for some of these fabrics, this matters a lot more than others, and I just wanted to briefly mention that because the IR light tends to wash out the aurora or a camera kind of a lot. Um, it looks a lot more obvious on film than through like the viewfinder of the camera. So just keep that in mind is that it's going to change the way things look a little bit, right? So just keep that in perspective. So we're doing things a little bit out of order. Up first, we have the British Combat Top in Desert DPM. Um, this one looks pretty good underneath both the normal night vision and with the IR illuminator turned on. As you see with the Aurora camera, the dye retains its color. It retains its, maybe not its color, but you can actually still see the pattern, right? So even with the IR illuminator turned on on both the Aurora camera and the PVS-14, uh, you can obviously see that it still works. So this is what we would consider the basic benchmark for most military uniforms with regards to IR compliance. Up next are the sort of knockoff snow pants. And as you can see, underneath the Aurora and the PVS-14, it looks normal until you click on the IR Illuminator. The IR Illuminator kind of highlights that this fabric is most certainly not, uh, the dyes in this fabric are not IRR compliant. Um, the color washes out. Now again, on the PVS-14, the IR Illuminator does not really wash out the colors too much. So this is kind of one of those in between. It's not really obvious that it's not IRR compliant, but you can definitely tell that an IR source, an infrared light source, is going to change the way this fabric looks. Now again, for a snow camouflage, is this really, is it really necessary to have IRR compliant fabric? I don't know. That's really up to you. But in a snow environment, I probably wouldn't mind this too much. Um, either way, it's kind of interesting to note. And up next are, of course, the ghost hoodies, both the green and the brown. Uh, now, again, like I mentioned, the ghost hoodie is very heavily marketed as being IRR compliant. So it is no surprise to find out that uh, even underneath a very strong infrared light source, uh, both versions of the ghost hoodie work just fine. You can still see the pattern. You can still see the contrasting colors. This camouflage is, of course, effective underneath IRR conditions, right? So it, the IRR uh, dye in the fabric is actually quite effective. And up next is Old Faithful, the official U.S. military poncho liner. Again, under normal conditions, it looks fine, but when you turn on the IR illuminator, you can clearly see that this is not IRR compliant. Now, this is one of those interesting cases because if you mess around with it a little bit, uh, like I'm doing here, and trying to get it to work, if you try to be as generous as possible, you can clearly see that it might be the actual fabric and not the dye uh, because there is a, almost like on the PVS-14 side, 
side of things, it looks like it gets cloudy uh, because the fabric is what's reflecting. The, the fabric is actually reflective because it's mostly, of course, made out of plastic, right? The dye used to make this poncho liner might actually be IRR compliant if it's tested in a lab setting, but in the real world, as you can see, it is quite bright. Um, it is highly reflective underneath an infrared light source. If you were using this out in the woods and someone had an infrared illuminator, man, they would they would uh, light you up pretty quickly. Um, so in real world testing, this is where things get a little different than, than in a lab setting. Up next is Helicon Texas version of the poncho liner, the Swagman roll. And as we can see here, it kind of has some of the same issues. It's highly, highly illuminated on uh, an infrared light source. Even on the PBS-14 version, is very much washed out. Um, now, granted, under, under the Aurora camera, it's washing out a lot more than I think is accurately representative. And just to prove to you that there's no trickery, here is the ghost hoodie on top of the Helicon Tex Swagman roll, um, just to show you what a true IRR compliant die looks like next to an IRR non-compliant die. The results are quite different, even underneath the PVS-14, which is, again, far more forgiving with regards to camouflage patterns. Up next is the Miltech uh, rucksack cover in Flectarn. Uh, this is the one that was very shiny to the naked eye under daylight conditions. So again, no surprise that this dye in this, uh, the dye used in making this particular item is nowhere near IRR compliant, so not really a good source. It's even worse if you shine a light directly on it. That's where, where even the uh, PVS-14 reveals that it is very much not uh, compliant. So this is a problem with a lot of waterproof articles. All right, up next is multicam. So this one should work pretty well. Wait a minute, what's going on here? This is extremely bright. Uh, it's quite reflective underneath the Aurora especially. What is going on here? This is supposed to be official licensed multicam and it is glowing like a neon sign. Something else is going on here. What could it possibly be? Some of you might have already figured this out, but we'll take a look at this multicam pattern a little bit later. And again, just to kind of keep in the theme with multicam, these multicam gloves uh, made by mechanics, they're of course not any kind of IRR compliant. Um, they absorb all of the infrared light and just reflect back a single color. So all the pattern from that multicam is gone the second that you put an uh, illuminator on it. Up next is the Arcturus suit. And I think that it's kind of obvious by now that some of the more um, cheaper Chinese quality type things are not going to be IRR compliant. Um, this one didn't do too bad until you turn the IR limiter on it like very strongly and then of course all the pattern goes away. You have to remember again this is a 3D suit so you're kind of comparing apples and oranges right? Uh, but you can clearly see that even with a 3D suit none of the dye in this um, is, is IRR compliant and it is very very obvious. You become one color one shape uh, out in the woods if you were using this and someone had an IRR source. And up next is the Angolan military poncho and really this one's just to kind of make everyone feel a little bit better because this one performs very, very poorly. There is, not only does this not have any IRR uh, compliant dye in it, but it also is very much plasticized. Remember, this was shiny to the human eye just under daylight conditions. It doesn't look too bad underneath the PVS-14 until you turn the IR light source directly on the poncho, and, the, and then even the PVS-14 is like, nah, dude, that ain't gonna work. Just keep that in mind with a lot of rain garments, you're, you're gonna have these problems. And then finally, one of the more interesting samples here, the the Arctis uh, combat smock that has been dyed a slightly darker brown. Um, this one, uh, y you can judge for yourself, but to me, this looks like the clear winner in this sample lineup. I don't know if this is due to the pattern or or what, but I tried to get this this garment to fail. I tried to get this pattern to fail, but as you can see here, even under the absolute strongest IR illumination, you can still see every single bit of the pattern. No, like you can distinguish, you can even distinguish between light tan and like the even lighter tan in the M90 pattern. That to me, that just blew me away. Uh, that's very fascinating. And again, I don't know if this is because of the the pattern itself has larger, um, larger chunks, larger fractal elements. I don't, I don't know, but that 
probably has something to do with it. But again, I tried to get this one to fail because I thought that maybe the RIT synthetic dye would have some impact on it. And I think that the RIT dye just kind of disappears because the RIT dye is obviously not IRR compliant. But underneath is still the desert pattern, right? So under night vision devices, it, it doesn't, it's a non-starter, it doesn't matter. Um, but this does go to kind of show you that if you have a a garment that or, or, or some kind of fabric that is not IRR compliant and you try to dye it, you got to use an IRR compliant dye because this just turns back to its normal color um, underneath uh, the night vision devices. So again, very fascinating test, very fascinating set of, of examples. And I think this proves kind of a lot of different things. And so we come back to multicam. Why is this particular combat top glowing when it should be perfectly IRR compliant? Well, to take a closer look at this, we have zoomed in to a piece of raw multicam fabric straight from the factory, never been cut or put into any kind of clothing. As you can see, this multicam fabric straight from the factory is perfectly IRR compliant. You can see the entire pattern. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. So what is wrong with this combat shirt. We can see that if we compare the two together, they look very different, even though they're made out of the exact same fabric. So what's going on here? Well, some of you might have deduced that the problem here is what we call optical brighteners. You know those laundry detergent commercials that advertise, oh, we keep your whites white and your colors vibrant, you know, all those kind of buzzwords for the advertising of laundry detergent. Well, guess what? Optical brighteners and laundry detergent completely negate all of of the effects of IRR compliant dye. Optical brighteners leave a very thin film residue over the threads of fabric. In normal civilian life, this doesn't really matter. It actually makes your clothing look a little bit better, I guess. But in a tactical setting, this makes you glow like a highway sign. So the lesson learned with this is do not use optical brighteners on your tactical clothing. I myself try to use detergent that does not have any optical brightening agents in it anyway for my regular clothing as well, just because I'm kind of an idiot and I always forget. And as you can see, the effect is quite significant. So I myself just tend to use laundry detergent that doesn't have optical brighteners in it. It's a challenge, but you might have to buy some organic stuff. Who knows? Really just check the bottle to make sure that you don't have any optical brighteners in your particular laundry detergent. And just as a side note, now that we know about optical brighteners, you can go back and look at some of the other examples in, that we've covered today and see that there are a couple of examples that look like they might have used optical brighteners. The, the best example of this is the U.S. military poncho liner. This, when I first got it and took it out of the package and looked at it under night vision, this is exactly what it looked like. It has never been washed with an optical brightener. It just looks like that. It looks like somebody washed it with an optical brightener before it got sent to me, but it was still brand new when I got it. So just so you know, sometimes things are treated with optical brighteners in the manufacturing process. Sometimes they're not. My sneaking suspicion is that this poncho liner was probably made with IR are compliant dyes. You can clearly see the multicam pattern underneath uh, the fabric, but it was also probably treated with an optical brightener at some point in the process. Or it could just be the fabric itself, like I mentioned earlier. It's really hard to tell. All I know is that the effect is the same. The sucker is really bright under a night vision device. So what are some of the lessons learned from all of this information today? Well, for one, we can clearly see that fabrics and dyes are not simply IRR compliant or not IRR compliant. There is a whole range of levels of effectiveness. And because of this, not all IRR fabrics and dyes are created equal. Some fabrics are really not that effective at breaking out the different colors and tend to blur together as one color, even if they are labeled as being IRR compliant. And other fabrics that are not even advertised as being IRR compliant actually work really well. Pattern has a great effect on visibility at night, even if the dyes used are IRR compliant. Micro patterns and multi-scale camouflage schemes such as pixelated, digital, or fractal patterns patterns might actually have a hard time breaking out and differentiating one color from another under night vision conditions. Fabric composition also has a huge effect on visibility with a night vision device. You can have the most effective IRR dye on the planet, but if the fabric is extremely synthetic, rubberized, or plastic, it will be shiny and reflective in the traditional camouflage sense, which is not good. Remember, fabric reflecting IRR dyes is good, but fabric being reflective like a highway sign is not good. 
Sort of along the same lines as fabric composition, fabric coating matters a lot too. Rain gear is the biggest offender in this category, so much so that we are going to do another video at some point on just rain gear and how different water repellent fabrics shine under night vision conditions. The good news about rain gear is that chances are, if you are wearing rain gear, you're going to be wet, and water reflects light anyway. So this really matters more for clothing and gear that you treat yourself to be water repellent. Again, this is its own rabbit hole that will go down in due time. IR illuminators are a great equalizer in that they separate the good patterns and dyes from the ones that are less effective. Gone are the days when the benchmark for IRR compliant fabrics was simply to look at the pattern through a PVS7. Modern warfare has changed. Patterns and dyes that can stand up to being blasted with an IR illuminator and don't glow like a neon sign are preferable. And finally, optical brighteners in most modern laundry detergent present massive vulnerabilities that negate even the best IRR compliant fabric dyes. Always avoid washing your tactical gear, camouflage clothing, or uniforms in laundry detergent that has optical brighteners in it. So if you're looking to buy gear that doesn't make you look like a DOT sign at night, what can you do? Well, there's not really much that can be done, honestly, because of the wide range of effectiveness of IRR dyes. For the most part, you are just going to have to buy gear that looks like it might work and then test it to be sure. A good way to increase your chances of success is to check with a company to see if they are using IRR fabric dyes. Send them an email and ask them. If you get a response and the person doesn't know what you're talking about, I would, you know, probably avoid that company. And for the companies that manufacture gear, now is your chance. If you've got a product that is IRR compliant or does really well under IR conditions, advertise it. I myself buy most of my gear from small one-man companies and it would be really great to see gear makers actually include including a fabric's IRR status. Or even better, photos of what a product looks like through a night vision device with an IR illuminator. Because even a lot of the bigger companies out there are supposed to be using official IRR compliant dyes, but they are not. Some companies manufacture products specifically advertised as being IRR compliant, like the Con Camo Ghost Hood. Of course, there's no way to be completely sure, but chances are if a gear company even knows what IRR dyes are, that's a step in the right direction. You can be sure that pretty much 100% of the gear made for the airsoft market or made in China is not going to be IRR compliant, unless it's made with officially licensed fabric. I don't mean to knock the airsoft market, but I personally would avoid products that are not made with official fabric or look like they might be knockoffs of something else. Again, I don't necessarily have a problem with buying knockoffs for specific things, but in the field of camouflage, you really do need the real McCoy. Also, do not use optical brighteners. Use natural detergents if you can, and if you use a highly manufactured product, check to make sure that it does not include optical brighteners, even if it is organic. If you have already washed a bunch of gear with detergent that has optical brighteners, wash it again several times with detergent that does not have optical brighteners. The brightening solution is like a thin film on the fabric threads, but it should come off if you wash it enough. On some fabrics, it will never come out, so you might be screwed in some situations. There's really not much anyone can do to help you in that situation, so prevention is really your best shot. And while I'm on the subject, be careful when buying gear on the second secondary market, especially stuff that's normally washed. Like, if you're buying a chest rig or a rucksack or something online on eBay or something like that, you probably don't really have to worry about it too much, especially if it's like an official surplus item, because most of the time you don't really wash rucksacks unless it gets extremely filthy. But, but if you're trying to buy a really rare clothing item, chances are it's going to be washed with optical brighteners because the surplus shops just don't know that you can't wash this stuff with regular detergent. And as a side note, now that we've done a video on this topic, my guess is that the secondary market, like on eBay, for gear, particularly uniform items or any kind of clothing really, is going to be flooded with people who went into their closet, looked at their stuff with a night vision device, and realized, oh my gosh, I washed this with an optical brightener and it's never going to be the same again. Um, so just be mindful of people trying to unload their gear on the secondary market. And at the end of the day, test your gear and your buddy's gear. It would suck to get all the way out to the field just to find out that you glow in the dark. And it would suck even more for your gear to be on point 
but the guy standing three feet away from you is glowing like a federal agent in an online chat room. The unfortunate part about all of this is that you might not be able to tell if something is IRR compliant until you buy it, and then you've got to either return it or figure something else out. Either way, test and make sure that you don't glow in the dark before you go into the dark. All in all, these are some pretty interesting findings and interesting things to think about. And fear not, we are currently working on setting up some more realistic camouflage comparisons in the future. So do not be upset if your favorite camouflage did poorly, even if you do some testing on your own. There might be some redeeming attributes that we will explore under a variety of sensors, conditions, and environments at a later time. So thanks again everyone for watching, thanks for your support, and we will see you next time. And as always, fight in the shade.